Funding for Not a Vampire is provided by viewers like you. Find perks and tiers at patreon.com slash not vampire. Thank you. I've been doing a bit of self-reflection lately, and in doing so, I'm realizing I've had quite a few gay crushes throughout my life, and especially as a kid. But I never really viewed them as such, basically because of believing I must be heteronormative and just inherently not understanding attraction. I mean, being asexual. I can only attempt to imagine what an allosexual experience is like. It's taken me some time to recognize that my interest in certain characters in media went beyond relating to them or thinking they look good. I mean, I'm very disappointed Flick from Animal Crossing isn't a girl. I find my attachment to him slightly lessened now that I know he's not the gal I thought he was. My gayness is stronger than I realized. I guess the best way to phrase it is that I've been experiencing aesthetic attraction towards girls for as long as I can remember without recognizing it. That just saying I thought they were cool doesn't fully capture why I felt drawn to them. Hell, this kinda explains my interest in an emo girl I knew in middle school. So in honor of Pride Month, I thought it might be fun to waltz down memory lane through a handful of gay crushes I've had on fictional characters. In list form! Numbers 1, 2, and 3, Elion, Will, and Tarani from Witch. The first one that I can recall is Elion from Witch. While it was cool that she had seemingly boundless powers and had the whole secret royalty thing going on, mainly, I adored her hair. The TV show doesn't quite do it justice. Because of her, I fell in love with the short hair with wispy bangs and longer sections to form braids look that I rarely see replicated in other characters. Plus, I've always appreciated her sweater, skirt, and tall boots outfit combo in the show. Hell, I love most of the dresses she wore too. They always worked on her, even the ones I'd hate to wear myself. My crush on her was very much born out of aesthetics. I remember, however, being more into Will both aesthetic and character-wise, but I can no longer really recall why. Part of it might be an expression of my modern love for feminine people with short hair and for redheads. Plus, her transformed version had the skirt and tall boots combo that I enjoy. I think I was also connected to her general feistiness, not ready to give up at the first point of resistance attitude. Whenever I'd imagine myself in an adventure scenario, I'd always wanted to be the one who kept fighting in the face of danger, so in a way she ended up being the embodiment of what I wanted to be as a kid. Tarani was also a bit of a crush for me, but not as much as my best friend from elementary school. Mainly, it's her Jedi Padawan hairstyle that does it for me. It just looks so cute on her to the point where I'm saddened by her transformed hairstyle. That is, unless she's not wearing glasses. I recently read further into the comic, and the first panel I saw of transformed Tarani without glasses, I immediately fell in love. I'm not sure why the glasses make such a difference. I guess I prefer the glasses with her Padawan hairstyle because it complements her youthful features, but I find the glasses distracting when she's in her older, transformed state. It's strange because I usually love glasses on girls. Then again, none of the other girls on this list wear them, so maybe I'm not as into them as I think. Number 4, Esmeralda from Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Esmeralda was also a bit of an aesthetic crush, initially at least. I have a huge thing for people with black hair and green or blue eyes, and I'm also immediately attached to how darkly the outline of her eyes are drawn. Like to suggest that she's wearing an emo-ish eyeliner look, which is a base aesthetic for me. As I got older, I also came to appreciate her song where she asked God to help the many she saw in need. That while she could get by on her own abilities, there's plenty others who couldn't and are being mistreated for simply being different. It's a sentiment I've often mirrored in my own life, and so it's greatly satisfying to see it portrayed in media, especially with a character I'm already aesthetically drawn to. I've also really come to love her color palette and overall character design, though I don't quite have the words to explain why lexically. Number 5, Claire from Degrassi and Next Generation. This is where I out myself for having a pro-Claire bias. Like the others on this list, I'm totally living for her aesthetic. From her Catholic school uniform to her short hair, I basically love every look on her. Well, except for most of her season 13 and 14 outfits, mainly because I felt it basically mirrored how every other female character dressed at the time except maybe Maya and Grace. But her short hair? Totally Kino. As I've said before, Claire's style is how I'd like to look if I wore colors. Conservative, yet fun. I've also always been aesthetically drawn to her curly hair with bangs look from seasons 10 through 12. It's a style I've always wanted for myself and have only recently been able to achieve. 
but my crush on her isn't only out of how she's dressed or does her hair. I'm drawn to Claire because of how smart, strong-willed, and caring she is. She can be too into herself at times, but other times she's the girl who accepted Adam for the guy he is. She's the person who reflected on why she was afraid of being compared to Connor and came out recognizing that being different isn't bad and the Shep was in the wrong for enforcing that notion. The one who made it known that she disapproved of Degrassi's draconian reactions to Degrassi nudes in Vegas Night. Plus, I also deeply related to her acting as the voice of reason to Allie's attempts to get her surface-level desires in their early seasons. Uh, no one understands Claire the way I do. Number 6, Thumbelina. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a redhead in a long flowy skirt. Even as a kid, I remember being awed by the animation on her skirt, how it didn't look restrictive but instead lively as she moved. And the best part was that she had a loose bottom half of her outfit while the top portion was form-fitting. It greatly complemented Thumbelina's figure while also not being stiff like a pencil skirt or mermaid style dress. I was also totally into her little tufts of hair that framed her face. I find that I'm not really into the pulled back look in general. I always want bangs or some sort of outline to transition from the face to the hairline. And the three bits of hair poof achieve that effect for me. Even though I don't really like the movie she's in these days, I keep coming back to her adorable character design. Number 7, Allison from The Breakfast Club. In high school, and still a bit today, I had a huge thing for weirdos. People who looked cool while giving the middle finger to society. I loved how Allison kept the other characters on their toes, making them wonder what she'd do next and just acting out what felt right at the time, be it making strange sandwiches or using dandruff to imitate snow. All while also being the silent observer to everyone else's antics and needing to ease into forming words in front of other people. And the reason why she acted the way she did was extremely relatable to me. We were both ignored. We felt like we had to make people care about us and what we were up to. Somehow alter ourselves through lies to get people to think that we matter while avoiding discussing the darkness behind those actions. Basically calling out to others while also being terrified of being vulnerable to anyone who might answer. I mean, I also totally dig her bangs that often hide her face and her general dark look. While lacking much color, it's also got an I put this on because it's comfortable and I'm operating on a different set of priorities than conventional fashion vibe that I also find reflected in myself. There are a couple more that I can think of like Sarah from Liberty's Kids, Rapunzel from Barbie as Rapunzel, and Yui from Fushiki Yuki, but I can't really find the words to fully explain why I was into these characters as well. I mean, saying aesthetic good doesn't really express much. If we learned anything today, I think it's that I'm a sucker for short feminine hairstyles, redheads, flowy skirts, and light colored eyes paired with black hair. So yeah, be gay, do crime, black lives matter, and happy pride y'all! It's not gonna show up well, but can I just say I love this sea green color. It is beautiful. I mean the picture's good too, but oh, the color. So yeah, a long time, no see. If you want to know why it's been such a long time, uh, check out the uh, update post thing that I did in the description. I'm glad I actually got to wear this cape. Like, I haven't had a chance to wear it in the two years I've had it. I was going to wear it to my first Pride Parade that I was going to go to this year, but I'm not going to name names, but a little thing happened this year that prevents me from going to my first Pride. Something else that's pretty cool is that I got another piece of fan art. It's a quick little ditty that came out of a recent stream where I played Monster Prom with some friends and discovered this amazing but unfortunately undateable vampire hottie. I mean, just look at him. I don't know how to explain what's awesome about him and what draws me to him, unlike, say, some vampires like Liam. This bit of fan art comes from I'm a Freaking Panda. Thank you very much again for submitting some fan art. And if you guys have any fan art of your own that you'd like to send me, you can send it to me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at NotVampire. Or you can come to my Discord server where I have an entire channel dedicated to art regarding me or uh, Tarbuck Transom, who often helps me host live streams. And if you want to make sure that I can make these videos on a more consistent time schedule, then you should check out my Patreon. Of course, you get some things in return as well, like you could have seen this video two days early, and you can get access to my Not Vampire Lately podcast, especially if you're someone who sticks around for these end updatey bits. I think you'll really enjoy them because I go into more detail there than I do here about what's going on in my life. 
That's patreon.com slash not a vampire. Thank you very much for consuming this video, and until next time. Oh, oops. <laughs> I left this recording. I didn't mean to do it. Oops. <laughs>